Church has always been a vital part of every believer's life. Hello, I'm Pastor Gray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Longview, Texas. Thank you for taking the time to tune in for this service. I'm standing in our auditorium, and here in just a moment, I'm going to take you into this auditorium as we are conducting the services here at 2200 West Loop 281. My heart's desire is that as the Word of God is preached, that God would do something during this service. Again, thank you for being with us. Enjoy the services. I'll be back at the end. God bless you. Second Kings chapter 22. Hey guys, if I can get it a little bit more, a little bit more down here, that would be great. Second Kings chapter 22. And I have thought much about this Sunday night, knowing it was a uh, first of the year on a Sunday night here we're sitting and uh, we won't be able to capture this New Year's Day again. But I want to come to you from the excitement of a child that grew into a young teenager, uh, 18. And then at the 18-year age of age, something began to happen in his heart. And here you have a king, and the king Josiah. And we're going to read about him. He's eight years old when he begins to reign. I thought often about the excitement of a child, the excitement of what happens to a child. Children are just amazing. But if a child has never grown up under the influence of God's Word, think about this. They haven't grown up under the influence of God's Word. For whatever reason, they grow up under the influence of a heritage. We're going to see that here in just a moment. Thank God for our heritage. Thank God for the moms and the dads that kept us in church. Thank God that your mom and dad at some point, how many had that kind of mom and dad that took you to church and kept you in? Praise God for that. Praise God for that. Thank you to every parent here that's taking their children to church and you make sure your children are in church. But here you have a king that grew up with a heritage, this is very important, but he did not grow up with a constant influence of God's Word. Whenever you find a church that has the heritage, they, they have the name, they, they have the, the legacy, minus God's Word, this is very dangerous for a church to be in. We find here that King Josiah, in fact, I kind of adjusted my pages because I wanted to go back. And if you'll go back to 2 Kings chapter 21, you're going to find out that Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hesba. And he did that which was evil. Now, this is very interesting because he did that which was evil. 55 years. Go to verse number 19. If you'll look there, verse number 19 and, and 21. Ammon, a, a, Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was that person, and he did that which was evil. So here you have the kingdom, and, and I really got to studying this for this night, and I thought to myself, here they have the heritage of a kingdom without the Word of God. And I, and I want to tell you, I don't want that kind of church in 2023. I, I just don't want to be known. 2200 West Loop, Longview Baptist Temple, Emmanuel Baptist Church. I, I don't want it to be that, that legacy. I don't want to live off that. I want revival to happen to our church. And I'm intrigued by Josiah. Look at there in verse number 22. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jed Jediah, and the daughter of Adaiah of Boscath, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you because I realize right now I, I need you. I need you more right now to be able to articulate because, Lord, how this has started off is not even in keeping with what I have written down. 
and that's very scary ground to be on. But God, I know that you're in control, and I know that my words are be, w- w- should be few tonight so that your influence can be much. God, I ask that you'd help us to just look at what we have going on and what an opportunity that we have. But God, it's going to come down to us. It's going to come down to us exercising our will to follow your leading. And God, may you set the tone for our church with your word. And Lord, we thank you that you've given us the command to love and you've given us the wherewithal to love. Lord, bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here you have Josiah was eight years old, and he began to reign. He reigned walking after the paths of David, his father. I find this very interesting that as you walk down through here, that he is reigning at eight years old. But then something happened when he became 18 years of age. And if you keep reading through there and look at verse number, verse number five, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have, that have oversight in the house of the Lord, and let him give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house under carpet carpenters and builders and masons to buy timber, hew stones to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money uh, that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, look at this, I have found the book. Now, now this is amazing. They were repairing the house of the Lord. And if you'll look in verse number 3, and it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. Now we have this 8-year-old becomes king. He's walking in the ways of David. This kingdom had not known a king like this. The kingdom had only known two previous kings that were evil kings. But here this naive, innocent babe, eight years old, steps up. And he says, you know, we had a father named David. David, that's who I'm going to walk after. But in the 18th year, something happens that when they repair the house of the Lord, they find the book. Don't you love that? If you want to change a life, find the book. If you want a church to break out of living in the past and you're living right where you need to, you find the book. And I I made a note when I was studying this and I was getting excited because I just don't want to live in the paths of our past. I want to live in the pages of the book in the present. Because it's very easy to lull ourselves into thinking that we're walking after the ways of our heritage, but anytime we're living in the shadow of man rather than living in the presence and the light of God, we're going to get ourselves in trouble. And so now you find here that something begins to happen. And as the house of God is being repaired. And as the house of God, this young man, this young king said, look, let's go clean out the house of God. So they start cleaning out the house of God. Then all of a sudden the book is found. They bring the book to Josiah the king. And then Josiah begins to read the book. Would you look in verse number nine or it's being read to him. Here is a young man trying to do his best. He's living the best he knows how after the reputation of King David. And I'll pause and tell you this, you better live like you should live for the Lord because until somebody finds the book, they're going to have to walk in your Christianity. Uh, Until the book changes them, they're going to have to walk in your honesty. Look at what it says. Verse number 9, And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and delivered it into the hand of them that do the work that have oversight in the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. You see, he was living with how, a, how the house of God and how the people of God had become. He did not know that what God had said 
was different than how they were living. They had just been living. They had been doing. And then when the book came to light, it brought light to how everybody was living. And so this king, this king began, and if we'll, we'll keep reading here, look at verse 11. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahiakim the son of Shaphan and Achbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Asahiah a servant of the king saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us. Because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that he hath written concerning us. Do you know what he said? Are you telling me that we've been living opposite of this book and that our God has been upset with us? Can I tell you that the greatest day in your life, in my life, is when we come to the reckoning that how we're living is not pleasing the Lord. And here is a young man that now he's in, he's 18, his 18th year, and it's like, whoa, time out. Are you serious? Well, I got to have confirmation. I, I, I have to have confirmation that the words that I just read that made him rent his clothes, that made him go, are you serious? We're living and God's upset with us? So look what he said. In verse 14, so Hilkiah the priest and these people, they go unto Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Haras, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they communed with her. Now, I, I'm not quite sure why they didn't turn to Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was at their disposal. The only thing I know is this, according to the book, he said... You take some people because if what I just read, if what I just read is true, we're all in trouble. And I have to have confirmation that I'm not misreading. So he said, you guys get to Jerusalem. And they went to this, this prophetess. She was not a leader in the church. She was a keeper of the robes there in Jerusalem. And many people think that this was the Bible college there in Jerusalem. And here's the keeper of the robes. And she, they went to her, and they said, and look at verse 15. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read, because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Would you look at the reaction? Because thine heart was, read it please, tender. And thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore... I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. And thine eyes shall not see all the evil that I will bring upon the place. And they brought the king word again. He had rent his clothes in this ignorance of cleaning up the house of God. They brought him a book. He had never seen this book. He had no idea what this book was all about. But when he read the book, he said, if that book's true, we're in trouble. Now somebody get to Jerusalem and somebody go there and you find out for me if this is true. And when they went and asked, is this true? A dear lady of God said, it's true. 
But I'll tell you what's not true. It's not going to happen to Josiah because his heart was tender and because he humbled himself. And he realized that how the people are living was not pleasing the Lord. You see, they were commanded to read the covenant. Would you go to Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 9? And if this thing keeps acting up, I'm going to switch over, guys. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 9. How could it be that they had never known this? How could it be that they had gone 50 years and they had gone two years and evilness was how, how did this happen? It happened because they failed the command of reading the covenant. Look at Deuteronomy 31, verse 9. And Moses wrote this law, Deuteronomy 31, 9, and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, look at this, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy strangers that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children, which have not known anything, would you read it? This is real time. That their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. As you return to 2 Kings chapter 22, if you go back, do you know what he was saying? The reason we have come to this place to where our children are just living in a heritage of David, but they have no real-time fear, is because somebody dropped the ball because every seven years when the people gathered, you were to stand and the priests were to read the law of Moses to learn that if their children didn't know anything, that once they heard the word of the Lord, that the children would react like that teenager reacted. Oh my goodness. And this is God's plan. It had been 75 years, according to the history at the time of 2 Kings 22. It had been 75 years since the people had gathered to read the book. And because it had been 75 years... That now all of a sudden, you're talking seasons and generations of children growing up. And their only identity to the Lord was that old man, with all due respect, called David. And that's all they knew. I don't want to live in a church like that. I don't want to live in a family like that. And here was the tenderness of a little boy. And this little boy that grew into be a teenager, and as he was reigning and as he was ruling, and can I just tell you, to, to live today on this philosophy, well, we've always done it that way. Well, if us always doing it that way is opposite of how God says do it today, then we lose back here. God wins today. And I think there needs to be a tenderness in our church in 2023 that whatever we hear from God's Word... That if it's opposite of how we're living, that we rent our hearts. Please don't rent your clothes. But we rent our hearts. Can, can we approach the word with the childlike faith that says, God, if I read it, and it's opposite of how I'm living. That God, I'm going to change. And I'm going to live the book. Would you go to 2 Kings 22 and look at verse 18. But to the king of Judah which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thy heart was what please tender, and thou hast humbled thyself. I believe that we can live under the favor of God. 
This morning when I was preaching about love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, we can't do it because we're human. But we can do it in the light and life of Jesus Christ. But he gives us his word. I have to be able to have the freedom to preach God's word unashamedly and to stand behind this pulpit and to bring to you the word of God. I simply read the word. I get in the word. But I'm always shocked that when I didn't even know that was in there. And are you seriously telling me, God, that this isn't right? This is what I want for our church. Revival is not and should not be confined to just a time. Revival should be. The book said it. I'm not living it. And then you reach up and you take that heart and you just rent it. And you're like, God, if this is true, we have been living 75 years with you not pleased with us. The reason you have the Holy Ghost of God living on the inside is because the Holy Ghost of God will not bully his way to prominence and preeminence in your life. Ephesians 4, 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. It is possible for us to come to church. It is possible for us to sing the hymns. It is possible for us to look the part. And it is possible for us not to be pleasing to the Lord. You know what Josiah said? I didn't know. Had no idea. They had not obeyed by the reading of it. So the children had no idea. But I love the fact that Josiah made a promise. And if you would go to 2 Kings and look at verse number 21, chapter 23 and verse 21. We cross over into 2 Kings chapter 23. I'm so sorry. I need to back up. 2 Kings 23 and look at verse 1. He now finds out the revelation. And the king sent they brought word back again. And the king sent and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. And the priests and the prophets and all the people, small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. I love this part. I, I love this part. I'm, I'm going to land the sermon here in the next couple of moments. I love this part. He had somebody read it to him, and when he heard it, he was like, oh, no. When they went and confirmed it, they came back, and guess what he said? Nope, I'm reading it. And that king, that teenager stood up, and he started reading, and then he did this. And the king stood by the pillar. And the king stood by the pillar. Look what it says there in verse 3. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. You know what he said? I'm going to walk after the Lord. I'm going to keep the commandments. I'm going to keep his testimonies and his statutes. Look at verse 3 with all their heart and all their soul. Whoa, time out. It's one thing, preacher, if you want to make a commitment for yourself, but don't make a commitment for the rest of us. That's not how the king felt. You know how the king felt? I know my heart. I didn't know, and I am going to follow you, and I'm going to keep all this, and so are they. You saw the title flash up on the screen. Look what it said. Verse 3, 
And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book. Would you please read the last phrase out loud together? And all Where does success lie? Success lies when we're in one accord. And success lies when the pastor is committed to the covenant of the Lord. But it also comes when the people are committed to the degree that the members are committed to the covenant of the Lord is to the degree that we as a whole will honor the Lord. I've already made up my mind. I'm standing next to the pillar. And in 2023, you have a pastor that's committed that if I see it in the book, I'm going to honor the Lord. Whatever you say here, I'm going to honor it. We're going to read it. And I'm going to tell you about it. And the children are going to know that this is what the covenant says. And I'm going to try with all my heart to live it and to teach it and to do it. How about you as a member? On this first day, stepping into the new year, Josiah was like, Lord, I don't ever want to live this way again. Now, you need to know that when you start living according to the covenant of the Lord, some things are going to start happening inside the church. It was the same things that happened inside the kingdom. You can follow along right there in the text after that in 2 Kings 22. Nobody follows the commandments of the Lord without some things happening. And kind of look at it as we close. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, verse number four, and the priest of the second order and the keeper of the doors to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah, in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the groves from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron, and burned it in the brook Kidron, and stamped it into powder, and cast the powder there upon, uh, there, thereof upon the graves of the children of, pe- of the people to show them how dead this really needs to be in our lives. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates which were in the entering in of the gates of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on the man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came up Uh, came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among the brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man make his sons or daughters to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that kings of Judah had given to the sun, and the entering into the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nath-Melech and the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burnt the chariots of the sons with fire. And the altars that were on top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the king of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them in the brooks. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had built it by Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones of men. Verse 15, moreover the altars that were at Bethel and the high places which Jer- Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made, an, who made Israel to sin, had, had made he br- both the altar and the high places. He break down and burnt the high places and stamped it to small powder and burnt the groves 
groves. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mountain and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed who prophesied these words. Then he said, what title is this that I see? And the men of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone and the bones of the prophets that came out of Samaria and all the houses, also the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the king of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests in the high places that were there upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. The king commanded all the people saying, keep the Passover upon the Lord your God as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not holding such a Passover from the days, look at this, they had not held the Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor in the kings of Judah, but in the 18th year of the king Josiah, wherein this Passover was holding to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirit and wizards and the images and the idols and the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the word of the law which was written in the book of Hilkiah, the priest that found in the house of the Lord. Stop. That was a lot of reading, but suffice it to say this. Without any reading of God's word on a continual basis, and you just live off the legacy of David, get ready. Sodomites get into our world. Amen. Harry Potters get into our world. Amen. Familiar spirits get into our world. You say, Pastor, you done gone to meddling now. I don't think so, because I don't want to live on the legacy without the purity of God's word. Amen. Read the book. Amen. And if it means we got to clean some stuff up, then let's clean some stuff up. Because I want God to know that I'm frail. My soul doesn't always get it right. My mind doesn't always get it right. My spirit doesn't always get it right. But you can count on one thing from this man, from this pastor, and from this member of Emmanuel, and this Christian, that when I know I'm wrong, I'm going to rent my clothes, I'm going to rent my heart, and I'm going to hit the altar, and I'm going to make it right. telling you it's right there in the book and if God's people in the book could live off history for 75 years with no current reading of God's word then no wonder the house was shut down and no wonder the sodomites the groves that they're talking about that were woven together, they were the groves that the women would grove in pergola, if you will, from the attachment to the house of God to where the sodomites lived, and it made one continuous grow. Sodomites next to the house of a holy God that created a man and a woman. And by the way, it's still supposed to be that way. Amen. Guys, don't ever be shy about saying, I think I'm in love with that woman. As long as she's not married. And don't ever feel bad. I'm in love with 50 women as long as they're all not married. I'm just coming to you to tell you this. I want the attitude of that king. If at the end of 2023, if we are not a holier people, I'm going to end with this question. And, and don't answer out loud. But could you tell me a service in 2022 that you came down and got right about something? When? In 2022, did God's word so rock your world that you had to get up and just come tell a holy God? I was wrong. Several months ago, I'm in the middle of preaching a teaching Wednesday night and I was teaching out of Romans 14 and, and I read a clip of a verse that I was like oh my goodness I am such a hypocrite as a Christian have we just continued 
to where God's Word no longer penetrates and gets past the facade. Y'all, listen to this. God's Word should so change you and I that when it's preached, when it's taught, when it's read, that you get right. I'm standing next to the pillar saying this, God, you got me. I'm yours. And I make you a covenant. I will follow you. And I will love you with all my heart. And whatever this book says, that's what I'm going to do. The question on the table is this. What kind of people are you? Because my time is only as impactful, and this church can only go as far as when we all come together and say, God, we're all of one accord. Whatever you say is what we're going to do. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Boy, tonight, I really want tonight to be inaugural. I want it to be the beginning. I want our hand to go on the Bible, and I want us to raise our right hand and affirm in our hearts that God, this year in 2023, will be a year that you guide and you clean up our world. I don't know your world. I don't want to know your world. But I just want every time we come to church that we are going, God, change us. Change us. I'm going to ask you something right now. If you're like, Pastor, I'm so with you on this one. Would you stand and just say, Pastor, I, I want that kind of church. Because the Bible says, and the people stood. I'm not asking for perfection. I'm just asking that you'll put your life before the Lord. And that you'll just say, God, in 2023, if you tell me, I'm going to clean it up. I make you this promise. I'll preach God's word. I'll preach it. But if there wasn't a service in 2022 that you had to make a change, then we're living after a legacy. We're not living after the book. Thank you for taking the time to view our services. I trust that the sermon, the message, the truth was a blessing to you. My number's at the bottom of the screen. If I can do anything for you or Emmanuel Baptist could be a blessing to you or yours, please reach out to me, let me know. I also would like to know what God has done in your heart. I would love to rejoice with you. I would love to pray with you. I would love to add your prayer requests to our Wednesday night prayer bulletin. So if you want to, number's at the bottom of the screen, text me, let me know. God bless you, and I trust that the Lord will bless your day. Join us again for another broadcast here at Emmanuel Baptist Church.